As with any lifestyle change or physical exercise program, consult your physician before you begin your yoga practice. If you are pregnant, discuss your yoga practice with your yoga instructor. As your pregnancy progresses, you will need to modify or avoid certain poses. Move at your own pace and modify the poses as needed in order to maintain alignment and easy breathing in every pose. If you feel any discomfort, dizziness, or pain during your practice, either modify the pose so that you are comfortable or take a few moments to rest. It is very important that you listen to your body and practice yoga in the manner that is the safest and most comfortable for you. Namaste. Hello, my name is Sarah. We'll be moving through a Hatha flow sequence. If you feel you need to modify the postures in your own way at any time, please feel free to do so. So beginning by lying on your back, palms up to the ceiling, sliding shoulders away from ears, hands a little bit of space away from your body, tucking your chin just enough to feel the lengthening at the back of your neck, and then just taking a few breaths here to really arrive in the space, arrive in your body before we move further through the practice. So just starting to become aware of your body here. So just beginning to scan the body from head to foot, just checking in with yourself and then drawing your attention to your breath. So just noticing, not intervening to start with, just noticing how your breath is flowing here. And then gradually, as it feels comfortable, starting to lengthen your exhale and take a fuller inhale. As you stay here and breathe a few, few breaths this way, just taking a chance to allow the body to relax a little bit more with each exhale that you take. So inhaling, belly rises, chest rises, and then exhaling, chest falls, belly falls. And then from here, just drawing the right knee into your chest, holding around the knee if it's comfortable behind, if it's not, and reaching away through the left foot, left heel, left toes, nice and active in the muscles of the left leg as you gently draw the right knee in, exhaling that knee down, and then inhaling the left knee comes into the chest, again holding around or behind the knee, this time reaching out through the sole of the right leg, muscles of the right leg nice and active as you reach away with the right foot. Continuing to check in with your breath, nice, long, smooth breaths. Inhaling both knees come into the chest, just having a gentle rock from side to side, massaging the spine. Nice and relaxed in the shoulders, facial muscles soft. And then from here, crossing at the ankles and just taking a rock to come up to sitting. Finding yourself in a nice seated position. Sit bones firmly grounded. Sliding shoulders down away from the ears. And then exhaling, chin comes to chest. And then inhaling a quarter circle over to the right. Exhaling, the chin comes back to the chest. And then inhaling a quarter circle over to the left. Just lifting the chin enough at the end of the inhale to lengthen the front of your throat. Exhaling back to center and then taking another one of these in your own time. Really becoming aware of all the muscles involved in the movement. Coming back to center and we'll take a couple of shoulder rolls. So inhaling, shoulders lift, exhaling, rolling back and down. And again, inhaling to lift the shoulders, exhaling, rolling them down. And again, inhaling to lift, really tying the movement to the breath. Inhaling, lifting, 
and exhaling to lower. Just continuing to take a couple more of these in your own time with your own breath. Keeping the connection of sit bones to ground and rolling over coming to hands and knees. So hands are below shoulders, knees are below the hip sockets, fingers spread nice and wide, inhaling, tilting the head and the sit bones up to the ceiling and then exhaling to round the spine into angry cat. Again, inhaling, opening the chest, tilting the sit bones and the head up to the ceiling and then exhaling, pushing the floor away with your hands, rounding the spine the other way. Keeping some of the length in the spine as you inhale. And then rounding the spine, deepening the movement a little more each time. Tucking the toes under, we're coming into our first down dog. So again, fingers are spread nice and wide. Keeping a long, long extended spine from crown of the head up to the sit bones. Drawing the navel just gently in towards the spine, keeping the lower back nice and open. You can keep the knees a little bit soft here if there's any discomfort. And lowering your knees down and coming back into child's pose or balasan so the hips sink towards the heels, whether or not they touch right now doesn't matter. Relaxing the forehead down into the ground, soft in the shoulders, and then taking some nice deep breaths here, breathing all the way into the lower back so that the whole of your back is filled with air with each inhale. And then each exhale, just releasing any tension, allowing the hips to sink gradually and naturally towards your heels as the muscles lengthen and relax. And then coming up to hands and knees and then back into downward dog again. Just taking a couple of breaths in down dog. Hands firmly planted and then lowering onto knees and from here extending your right leg to the side right hand comes to the leg for a little support inhaling the top arm up and then exhaling over into a side stretch preparation for gait posture if it's comfortable the gaze can come up peeking below your top arm keeping the length in the spine here inhaling up back to center exhaling to come out and then extending the other leg. Inhaling, the arm lifts, spine lengthens. And as you exhale, keeping that length coming into your side stretch on the other side. Keeping the belly button just gently drawn to spine here really helps you to stay strong through your core. And then again, inhaling up to center exhaling to come out and then from here coming back one more time into down dog so maybe the legs are working towards being a little bit more straight now that you've come into down dog a couple of times we'll walk the feet up to meet the hands coming into a standing forward fold or uttanasan so just relaxing the head down the weight of your head and as you hold the elbows just naturally draws you gently to the floor. There's nowhere to reach. Just allowing gravity to gently draw you down. Feet are nice and firmly planted in the earth. And then from here letting your hands release and we'll roll up to standing vertebra by vertebra. So head and shoulders will come up last. Once you're in standing, we'll come into Samastiti here, equal standing balance, hands are at heart center, and just finding yourself in a nice neutral, long extended spine position. Crown of the head lifting up, then inhaling, sweeping the arms and the gaze up overhead, exhaling to swan dive forward, hinging at the hip joints. 
Inhaling, just coming halfway up, lifting the chest, gaze comes forwards. Exhaling, stepping the feet back and then lowering down all the way to the floor. Pointing the feet and inhaling into cobra. Exhaling, lowering down and pushing back into down dog. You can come through hands and knees if it's more comfortable. And we'll take a few breaths in downward dog. So again, fingers are spread nice and wide, middle fingers pointing forwards. Leg muscles are nice and active here. The belly button gently drawing to spine. Nice long breaths. And then the gaze comes between your hands and stepping your feet up between your hands. Again, looking forward with a flat back. Exhaling, folding back down, the head hangs. And then inhaling to sweep the arms and the gaze up overhead. And exhaling back to Samastitihi. Again with an inhale, sweeping the arms and the hands up overhead. Exhaling to hinge at the hips, keeping the front body long. Inhaling, just lifting the chest and the gaze forwards. Exhaling, stepping back into an upright push-up or a plank. Lowering down, you can come via knees if it's more comfortable. Inhaling into cobra, keeping the length in the spine. Exhaling, pushing back, again through hands and knees or straight back into downward dog. And taking some nice, long, smooth breaths here. Starting to feel the heat building. Lifting the sit bones to the ceiling with each inhale. And then again, this time you can try hopping the feet between the hands to a flat back position. Exhaling to fold back down. And once more inhaling, sweeping the hands up overhead. Gaze comes up to the thumbs. And exhaling back to center. Inhaling, sweeping the arms up. Exhaling, hinging at the hips. Inhaling, the weight can come a little bit into the balls of the feet here. Exhaling, hopping the feet if you'd like to try that. Lowering down with control. Inhaling into cobra. Sternum lifts. Exhaling, pushing once more back into downward dog. Always remembering you can lower down into child's pose if you ever feel like taking a rest here. Really pushing actively into the hands, sending some of the weight back into the legs and the feet. And then at the end of your next exhale, gaze comes forwards, hopping the feet between the hands, inhaling to a flat back, exhaling, folding back down, head hangs. And then inhaling, sweeping up, gaze comes up, and exhaling back to center. From here we're coming into Utkatasana or chair pose, so bending the knees, Inhaling to sweep the arms up overhead, relaxing the shoulders down away from the ears. Hands can stay apart if there's tension in the shoulders. Sinking some weight back into your heels, making that connection of heels to earth. And then from here, we're coming into a standing side twist. So hands come back into namaste or to center. And then just gently twisting round to your left, very gently. Elbow can come to the outside of knee if it reaches naturally for a little bit of tension to guide yourself into the twist. Remembering to move very mindfully, exhaling to come out. And then taking the hands, clasping them behind the back, coming into yoga mudra or variation. So just relaxing the arms away from the body. Maybe they come over your head. Feeling the front of the chest open and expand with each inhale here. Thinking of relaxing the arms down, so not straining to get them over your head. And then letting the clasp of the hands go, bringing the hands back to center, and we'll come into the side twist on the other side. 
Again, just finding that elbow to knee for a little bit of extra traction there if it's useful. Moving very gently. Keeping the connection with your breath at all times. So nice, smooth, long breaths. And then exhaling to wind your way out. And we're coming back into chair posture, Utkatasana. Hands come up overhead, squeezing the knees together, taking an inhale, and then exhaling back to center, Samastitihi. So we're coming into a standing balance, Vrikshasana or tree posture. So just taking a couple of breaths in Samastitihi, really feeling feet grounding into the floor, and then just feeling nice and balanced here, shoulders sliding away from the ears, taking a couple of nice long breaths here, before you start to move the weight into your left leg. And then taking the right foot to the inner thigh, or if it's more comfortable, just to below the knee is fine too. Hands come into prayer. The left leg is nice and strong, muscles are engaged. If you'd like, taking the hands up overhead if you feel stable and balanced here. And then taking some long, deep breaths. Really feeling below the waist is grounding, above the waist is just lifting up. Exhaling to lower, and we'll come through to the other side. So this time the left leg comes in. Again, when you feel comfortable, taking the hands to center. Shoulders are sliding away from the ears. Muscles of the supporting leg are nice and engaged. And only if you feel nice and stable, taking the arms up overhead. Picking a fixed gazing point or drishti, something that's not moving, to fix your eyes and your mind on, really helps in the standing balances. Exhaling to softly lower out and coming back to center. Then from Samastiti, you're taking a big step out with your right foot as a heel to inner arch alignment of the feet. Inhaling at top, lengthening, and then as you exhale, extending down into Trikonasana or Triangle Pose, keeping that length in the spine on both sides. If it's comfortable in your neck, the gaze can come to the top hand. If not, just keeping the gaze forwards is fine. And breathing here. Top shoulder stays nice and relaxed. And then inhaling up to center, strong in the core, shifting the feet through to come through on the other side. Again, inhaling, lengthening, and exhaling, coming down as though you're between two panes of glass, so nice and sideways in alignment. Only taking the lower hand down as far as feels really comfortable. So never straining to come too far down. Facial muscles nice and soft. Nice long deep breaths here. Again inhaling up to center. And then shifting the feet. We're coming into warrior one. So just tucking the tailbone under. Inhaling, arms come up overhead. Shoulders sliding away from the ears. Nice and strong through the back leg. And then opening out into warrior two. So this time the body is in a sideways alignment and just the gaze comes along the front arm. From here, lowering the front arm to the elbow, we're coming into extended side angle, inhaling, sweeping the arm up overhead. It's one nice long line of energy running from the back foot up and out the top hand. Again, the gaze comes up below your top arm, only if it's comfortable for your neck. The next variation would be to lower the hand on the inside of the front foot. Inhaling to center. 
Taking the hands to the waist, inhaling to lengthen the spine, opening the chest, and exhaling into a wide-legged forward fold. Staying nice and long in the front of your body. Inhaling again, lengthening the crown of the head away from the sit bones, and exhaling to come into the forward fold. You can work with a block to support you if your hands don't meet the floor here. If your hands comfortably meet the floor, elbows facing behind you between your legs. Staying nice and strong in the legs, kneecaps are lifting by engaging the quads. Really using the core strength by just pressing down into the base of the big toe, waking up the inner tracts of the legs here. And then inhaling, just lifting the chest. Planting the right hand between your legs and inhaling, sweeping the left arm up overhead. Again, the gaze comes up to the top hand if it's comfortable for your neck. We're in a preparation for reverse triangle. Taking some nice long breaths here. Each inhale, crown of the head reaches away from the sit bones. And then exhaling, replacing that hand for the other and inhaling the right arm up overhead. Again each inhale lengthening the spine In each exhale maybe there's a little bit of space to just wind into the twist a little bit more staying nice and relaxed in the posture but strong in the legs exhaling that arm back down and then inhaling lifting halfway up exhaling the hands come to the waist and inhaling all the way back to center Stepping back into Samastitihi. Stepping back with your left leg will come through to Warrior One, sweeping the arms up overhead. Again, the shoulders slide away from the ears. Just tucking your tailbone under slightly, hips face forwards. Then opening up to Warrior Two, so the hips are sideways, just the gaze comes forwards along the front hand. Shoulders sliding down, relaxed nice and strong through the back leg. And then again, lowering that front elbow to knee, inhaling, sweeping the top arm up overhead and finding that long line of energy running up the back leg all the way up side of your body and out that top hand. Again, the variation is to lower down, front hand meets the floor, only if that allows you to keep the chest nice and open here. Keeping the connection with the breath at all times. Again, inhaling up to center. From here, we're taking a vinyasa to come to the floor. It's just a flowing sequence of poses, just like the first sun salutation that we took. So inhaling, sweeping the arms up overhead. Gaze comes up to the thumbs. Exhaling, swan diving down, nice and long in the front of your body. Inhaling, just lifting the chest. Gaze comes forwards. Exhaling, hopping the feet or stepping the feet back and lowering, this time all the way down. Inhaling into cobra, chest opens. And then exhaling, coming back into downward dog. From here, coming to sitting, however is comfortable for you. Taking a couple of breaths in staff pose, so the feet are toes up to the ceiling, back of the neck is nice and long, the chin is tucked. And then sweeping the arms up overhead with an inhale, exhaling, lowering down, staying nice and long in the front of your body, so not getting too concerned with lowering all the way down lengthening forwards into Paschimottanasana or seated forward fold taking some nice long breaths here thinking of lengthening forwards in the posture rather than lowering all the way down and then inhaling to come out Taking the hands about six inches behind you, fingers forwards, we're coming into reverse plank. So inhaling, lifting the hips up to the ceiling. If this is too much, working with bent knees is fine. 
nice and strong through the hands, fingers spread wide, front of the body opens, and then exhaling, lowering back down. From here, drawing the right foot into the left inner thigh, we're coming into Janu Shirshasana or head to knee. So inhaling, sweeping the arms up, twisting along the extended leg and then lowering down with an exhale. Again, thinking of lengthening forwards rather than rounding the back too much. So each inhale, lengthening crown of the head away from the sit bone. Staying nice and relaxed, so not straining to get anywhere in the pose. And then inhaling to come out and switching the legs in your own time, drawing the left foot into the right leg. Feeling connection of sit bones to ground, then inhaling, sweeping the arms up, lengthening the spine, twisting to face, and then extending over the extended leg. Toes stay faced up to this ceiling here, so not allowing the feet to flop out to the side, keeping toes up to the ceiling. Shoulders are nice and relaxed and soft, facial muscles relaxed. And then inhaling, coming out of the pose. Crossing the legs so the tops of the feet are to the floor. If this is uncomfortable, just working with cross legs is fine. Knees come in alignment. And then inhaling, the top arm comes up. Other arm comes to reach behind. Whether or not the hands meet really doesn't matter. You can work with a belt if this helps. And then sitting nice and long in the spine, taking some breaths here. Each inhale really allowing the front of the chest to open but not sticking the front ribs forwards keeping those nice and contained exhaling unwinding the hands and then coming into a gentle spinal twist inhaling to lengthen and exhaling coming into a twist using that top hand to top leg as a, just a point to guide yourself into the twist Thinking of each inhale, really lengthening the spine, and maybe with each exhale, there's just a little bit of space to twist around a bit deeper. Shoulder stay sliding away from the ears here, so no tension in the shoulders. Inhaling, bringing the gaze and the body back to center, and then simply unwinding the legs and crossing them the other way. If you're sitting with cross legs, just reversing the cross of your legs here. Again, inhaling, sweeping one arm up, reaching behind you with the other arm. Hands may or may not meet. Taking some nice relaxed breaths here. So even though the sensation in the shoulders may be a little intense, just trying to relax with each exhale, allowing the muscles to lengthen in their own time. Staying aware of connection of sit bones to the ground at all times. Exhaling, just allowing that to go. And again, finding top hand to knee, inhaling to lengthen and exhaling, coming through to that twist on the other side. The gaze and the eyes can complete the twist, so finding a nice fixed point to rest your eyes on really helps to quieten the mind and allow you to focus more internally here. Again, staying nice and long in the spine. Inhaling, coming back to center. And exhaling, just letting that cross of the legs go. And in your own time, coming back into downward dog. Taking a couple of breaths in down dog. Again, each inhale, the sit bones lengthen up. And then from down dog, sweeping the right leg, so foot comes up, and then sweeping the bent knee through, and lowering down, coming into pigeon pose, finding a nice, stable, balanced position for the pelvis, inhaling to lengthen, and gradually, slowly, if you feel comfortable, lowering down onto forearms. If you feel comfortable, you can walk the hands out, 
and allow the head to come closer to the floor. Back foot is reaching away from you, really just again allowing gravity to take over here, so not straining, not forcing the body into the pose. If there's any discomfort in the knee, backing away from that. Finding the balance of strength and comfort in each posture. Inhaling to slowly come out. Pushing into the hands, sending that foot back into down dog. And then from here, sweeping the left leg up to the sky. And then the left knee comes through. Again, taking some time to find your weight nice and centered. Inhaling, lengthening the spine, opening the chest as you exhale, just walking the hands out slowly, slowly. Taking a couple of breaths, if you want to go further, walking the hands out, allowing the head to come down. You can rest the head on a support or a block if it feels comfortable. Breath is nice and long. And then from here again, slowly recovering, coming back, pushing into the hands to send that foot back into downward dog. Coming forward into push up, lowering down, all the way down to the floor. And then from here, taking the hands to the lower back, we're coming into a preparation for a back bend. Inhaling, head and chest lift. Exhaling, the right cheek comes to the floor. Again, inhaling, just the head and the chest lift. And then exhaling, the left cheek comes to the floor. Again, inhaling to lift, maybe a little higher this time, nice and strong in the legs, relaxed in the buttocks. Exhaling, right cheek to floor. Inhaling to lift, staying nice and long in the spine, exhaling to lower. And then coming back to center. And this time as you inhale, we'll be lifting the feet as well as the hands. So inhaling, keeping that length in the spine as you extend the feet away behind you. Finding that position of strength and comfort so you can hold this pose comfortably. Taking some nice deep breaths into the chest and exhaling, softly lowering, pushing into the hands will come straight back into child's pose. Again, just allowing the hips to sink naturally towards the heels. Back of the neck is nice and relaxed, the forehead completely supported by the ground below you and breathing into the lower back. When you're ready, back into downward dog and then hopping the feet through to sitting. From here, extending your legs, knees can stay bent as you just roll the spine down to the floor. Once you're there, drawing the knees into the chest, arms out to the side in a T position. And as you exhale, slowly lowering the legs over to one side. If it's comfortable for your neck, the gaze can come to the opposite hand to complete the twist. Not worrying if the knees don't meet the floor, just allowing them to come to wherever they come to. And really breathing into that open side of your body. Inhaling, lifting back to center. And then exhaling the legs through to the other side. Gaze again can come to the other hand to complete the twist. Feeling the ribs expand with each inhale. Just relaxing the legs down. Again, inhaling, gaze comes to center, legs come to center. From here, just clasping around the knees, having a little hug of knees to chest. 
and coming up to seated in your own time. Finding that connection of both sit bones firmly grounded and then reaching behind you, clasping the elbows if that doesn't make sense in your body, the wrists, inhaling, lengthening, and as you exhale, lowering down into a variation of yoga mudra. Whether or not the forehead meets the floor really doesn't matter. Yoga mudra is said to be the seal of a practice. So just allowing an intention to settle, to keep the relaxation and calm that yoga can provide with you for the rest of your day, the rest of your week. Inhaling, slowly coming back up. And then exhaling to let the arms go. Extending the legs in front of you and again, rolling the spine down to the floor. Coming into our final posture, Shavasana or Corpse Pose. So just finding the feet hip width apart or even a little wider if it's comfortable. Palms stay up to the ceiling, some space between your hands and your body. And sliding the shoulders down away from the ears, sliding the tailbone a little bit further down away from you, so really lengthening the spine. And then as you stay here again, scanning your body for any signs of tension. So tucking the chin enough to feel some nice neutral length at the back of your neck. And then beginning to scan the body from head to foot. So firstly feeling the forehead nice and smooth and relaxed. All the little muscles around your eyes just softening so that the eyes sink naturally back into their sockets. Moving down, just feeling the jaw soften, root of the tongue softens. So although the mouth may be gently closed, teeth can stay gently parted in the mouth. So really letting go of any hidden areas of tension. Neck is relaxed, shoulders are relaxed, really feeling the floor supporting below your shoulder blades. So there's no holding on to be done in Shavasana. And then as we move down, letting the arms soften, skin on the inside of the wrist softens, hands are relaxed. Coming down to the torso, letting go of any of the drawing back of navel to spine. Belly is nice and soft once again, so each inhale the belly rises, each exhale belly falls. And then moving down, feeling the weight of your hips and pelvis just sinking back into the floor, really feeling the ground totally supporting you. Moving down, the long muscles of the legs that supported you through the practice, just allowing those to soften and feel heavy. Ankles are relaxed, so all the stabilizing they had to do, just letting that go as the feet gently flop out either side. And then as you stay here, just bringing your attention back to your breath. So once again, focusing on your breath. So just noticing the flow of air as it comes into your body and then watching the flow of air as it gently releases. So it's almost as though breath is just breathing you here. There's no control of the breath. As you allow your attention to stay focused on your breath, maybe thoughts come and go. So just not getting too attached to those thoughts, letting them pass through the mind and just inviting your attention to stay with your breath. As we stay in Shavasana, just really allowing the body to integrate all of the movements that we make in a yoga practice. So really just allowing the body to learn in its own way and to find some restoration and relaxation here. So each exhale is a chance to just slip a little bit deeper exhaling out any tension that you may still be holding on to and really sinking a little bit deeper than the level of those thoughts that may or may not be coming and going. And then as you stay here and breathe, just finding a point of stillness.
again using any exhale as a chance to just let go of any of that tension. Feeling your body just melting into the floor. So in your own time, starting to bring a little bit of movement back. So just beginning to wiggle fingers, wiggle toes, and then just allowing that movement to expand as it wants to. So maybe circling the wrists, circling the ankles. Taking a couple of deeper, reviving breaths here. So just bringing yourself back very slowly. And then doing whatever feels comfortable, whether that's taking the arms up above your head and inhaling a nice deep stretch. Exhaling to let that go. Maybe taking one more of those, so inhaling, stretching and lengthening, and then exhaling to let that go. And drawing the knees in your own time in towards the chest. Just having a gentle rock from side to side. And then lazily rolling the head from side to side. And then in your own time, just rolling onto your right side knees come into the chest. You can use your right arm as a support for the head and just taking a couple of breaths on your right side. And again in your own time, just using the left hand as support, pushing into your left hand, slowly bringing yourself up to a seated position, ready to move on with your day.